Hello Lola's, welcome back to my channel guys. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click the bell to be a part of the notification squad, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you're not following me on Instagram, my Instagram is Mr. Renity Smith Babies. Make sure you follow me. Um, my page is open to everyone right now. I haven't decided to make it a more private page because I just love sharing my babies with the world. So, also, I am blogging again. If you haven't followed my blog, it is MrRenitySmithBabies.com. And also, <laughs> I have a couple other things. If you support my channel and you enjoy my content, you like me as an artist or a person or both, um, I do have a paid channel membership. It is two tiers. There is a $1.99 level and there is a $4.99 level. Um, there's the two levels. Also, if you just want to highlight your comment with a super thanks, that is also welcome. And you can do that on any video. So today I am here with baby Nori. And Nori is, I named her Nori Brielle. And Nori Brielle is the Nori Scope uh, by Jennifer Sussman Price from Silicone Studio. Um, a lot of people um, probably have noticed that I've been buying a lot of babies uh, and pay, or buying and painting a lot of babies for silicone studios um every video that i do is not like a promo video um i am a collector first i like what i like um if i absolutely do not like a sculpt um i typically will not paint it there has been times where i've gotten sculpts and I wasn't as thrilled with it in person, just, and I'm just speaking not just from Silicon Studio, from just in general, that I'm gonna maybe like, ah, this is not exactly what I thought it would be. Um, but, you know, I go ahead and paint it and, you know, sell it or whatever the case may be. Um, but the thing is, is that I cannot keep every baby that I paint. So there are some that I absolutely love, but I gotta sell some of them because like I said in a couple other videos, and I've been saying this for a while lately, I'm now pushing over 30 something babies in my personal collection. And I really don't even have places for these babies. I really hate a crowded crib. I've, I've never liked, been the one to like, like four and five babies lined up in one crib. It's just never been my thing. Um, I'm kind of adjusting to that now. Um, but I used to like, if, even if I did one crib like that, I have one crib free for just you know, display of a special baby. I don't even, I can't even do that too much anymore. Um, well, I can't unless I kind of like pile them up on the, uh, up here on the changing table, which I like to leave free as well for photographs and stuff. So it's getting real crazy. But, um, so I will let you guys know when I'm doing a actual prototype versus when I am painting something, um, for my personal preference, uh, Nori was not a prototype. She's just one that I absolutely love the sculpt. Um, I fall in love with the sculpt from the very beginning. I like preemie babies in silicone. I love the, the preemies and the micro preemies in silicone. I just, um, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know why I do I don't hold them as much usually but I like to carry them around with me I like to pose them so this is why I actually uh, got Nor Nori with armatures <laughs> the little blanket gonna fall that's okay um I got her with armatures in her arms and her legs and I know for a lot of people with silicone you want the whole jiggle jiggle wiggle um, but for me and she has a squishy tummy that's her little tummy yeah, bless my little tummy um, but for me some babies I know I'm not gonna do a lot of holding holding like rocking or you know or whatever these babies are so tiny I just like the pose them so and take pictures and she does feel good in your arms though because she does have weight to her head she doesn't have like a little super micro skinny head and that's what I, I also love about this sculpt because it does have I'm gonna get her a flatter pillow give me a second I gotta find something else because that 
That pillow is a little too puffed up for her. Um, let's see, maybe I'll try it. Vegas headrest. Um, and if her hat fall off, guys, you know she's bald. You know, <laughs> y'all know uh, half of my babies are all of, well, mostly all of my babies are actually bald. So, here we go, which is probably going to be more suitable for her. So, yeah. But, yeah, um, so a lot of people, when you ask them why do they collect um, these dolls and, you know, what did they collect them for, you know, a lot of people will tell you that they collect for realism. A lot of people will tell you that the first thing they're going to say is I, I collect for realism or I love babies or I collect for the art. That's what most people answer is going to be initially. Um, I came into this hobby because I love dolls and I love realistic dolls. And growing up, it wasn't very many realistic dolls. Um, and so... I actually, uh, hold on, we're losing light. How are we losing light? Um, so I actually, when I found the Reborns, I was really, really ecstatic about finding Reborns that looked so realistic. Then as I got more into it, it became more about the art, the artistry, and the skills that these artists would put into the dolls, I was just fascinated with them. Of course, me personally, I was just a collector. Never thought in a million years that I would paint for myself because for me, I just wasn't an artist. It just, I just didn't see myself as being an artist. Um, but you know, over time, you know, I've told that story how I ended up transitioning to trying to paint, blah, 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 blah. So for me, I think now I collect for number one, realism, and then number two, art. But also it's a rela relaxation part for me with the painting. I love painting. Um, rooting is not horrible. I actually enjoy, don't mind sitting and rooting. Well, I don't mind rooting. It's just that I can't sit for long periods of time. I feel like I truly have ADHD. I just cannot sit that long and focus. And that's what's my problem. It just takes me a long time. So, um, there's that. Um, but the thing is about the realism for me, is like, what one person defined as being realistic may not be as realistic to someone else because I believe that for us, the realism comes with what's familiar to us. Um, I see a lot of people that go on and on about certain dolls, especially dolls of color, black dolls, and they're like, oh my God, this doll is amazing. This artist did an amazing job. And being that they are not really familiar with black people themselves it's really not realistic to us because the babies look nothing like how our babies really look um you know certain things are just like way off um and then and vice versa um but it just depends because i also noticed that depending on where you're at in the world you know, skin tones are different, um, different. It's like, I don't know. It's like some babies are more pale in certain climates and some are more darker and then this and that. And it's just, it's so it's really all based off of what you see as realistic to you and what's your personal preference. It always goes back to a personal preference and personal choice just as well as like when it comes to price and all that stuff. So I kind of collect, I think I am an emotional collector. I hate to admit it out loud, but I, I have said this many times because it is true. I'm a very emotional collector. I collect off of, if, a, if I see a doll in some way or another, it pulls a heartstring or I feel some type of draw, I'm drawn to it or, um, then there's others where it's like, I really, really love the artist. 
I love that they are trying to grow or they just started out or maybe they just have made such an impact in the community or in the, in the, in the industry or just in person when I met them one-on-one -on -one and I may want to have a piece of their art in my collection just to look back and say, hey, I remember this person, da 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 um, it's like, um, I, I talk about this, this thing every now and then, and it really bothers me that I do not know who this lady is. I cannot, I've never been able to find her again. It was like she was some type of angel. Um, I was at the first doll show that I was at, um, I went to a banquet and the people that I was supposed to be hanging out with. I didn't end up sitting with them because whatever. Um, so I sat with a whole bunch of people that I did not know anything about. And there was these two older ladies there and you know, they were really friendly and we were, we were laughing and we talked and then we started kind of talking and I know one had just literally had hip surgery or something like that. And we were like, Oh my God, how did you drive this far up here? And, um, she had drove, Flew, drove, da 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 da. I don't know, but anyway, she came um, to that show, and we were just like, "Wow, that's a lot." And then um, the one lady before I got ready to leave, she was a lady that made like these crystal little baby blank uh, bracelets, and she said to me, she said, "I don't know." She said something about my energy was. Uh, nice I had a kind spirit or something and she wanted me to have that bracelet and she gave it to me and I've held on to that bracelet for all these years and I'm always like and matter of fact when I get out through doing this video I'm gonna go and make sure it's still in the same place I would put it on the baby for a little bit and then I take it off and make sure I don't lose it I've been keeping up with it for all this time and I never met I, she gave me her number and I sent she said send me pictures sometime of your babies I like to see them and I did initially um send her pictures and stuff after a while and then after a while i didn't get no response or nothing like that so i don't know i don't know where she is i don't remember her name now i it's just crazy you know you lose phones your phones your contacts da 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 but i'm a very emotional person like i hold on to things for sentimental value um and then there are some things don't mean nothing to me child you can have it all i'll give you anything i'll give you everything um, so I could be from one end of the spectrum to the next, but I think with my collecting, I'm very emotional. If I do not like what an artist stand for, I do not like, like certain things personally about an artist. It's very hard for me to separate the two when the doll is in my collection. Like I, for whatever reason, it's just, it, it I don't want it. <laughs> um, and then you know I've tried to mature past that point so I have like I have a baby in my private collection now um and I thought I would never get another one of these artist babies because she just was very rude very unprofessional she was outright nasty and cold-hearted um actually to me and she has a pretty you know big name I guess whatever people you know really like her work and it, it makes sense she's she does amazing work as an artist but because of the way she was as a person I unfollow her I don't use typically go after her work but I acquired this piece like second hand and it's just it's just me um so I'm I I I do like the baby and so I do you know display or whatever but so I'm trying to grow past that part because I think a part of that is a little bit immature because in this art or in this in this you know in the world well I ain't gonna say it's immature because some people just don't deserve my money if that makes sense um like you know if an artist says a lot of derogatory stuff against you know black people as a whole and I'm a black people <laughs> um I don't want to I'm not going to support your your work I'm not going to give you my money I'm not going to you know um I'm not going to even paint it for nobody else I'm not going to buy it secondhand I'm just not going to help you thrive 
from one way to the next because it, it, it would just be stupid of me. It's like a slap in the face. So I'm very, I think I'm an emotional collector. So that's all I have to say. But also before I leave with this video, even though I got on a rant and a tangent about all of that, um, I want to tell you guys that out of all the silicone babies that I have in my collection at this point, um, I think Nori is still my absolute favorite baby. I, I honestly, um, I don't know, like I could, I could probably have two more of her, <laughs> um, but you know, I'm not, I'm not where I could just like spend money, spend money like that, but it is like the whole package. I really love the skin tone which she came out. Um, she is one of my darkest babies next to Logan. Logan is a different color, but their skin tones are different, but she's very close. They're like close and close, but overall, I just, I love her little sculpt because she's so tiny. I love that she has these armatures that pose and she has a squishy tummy and she's floppy and she's soft. And so she is my number one. And then, you know, of course I could rate the other ones, but that would take me time. But right off the bat, I could instantly tell you like Nori is a forever baby for me. Um, I just... You know, I'm, I was really, really happy with how she turned out. And she's just, I don't know. I just, only thing she could do is get better once she gets all her hair in. And I probably will root her after I finish my orders. But it'll be next year before she gets hair. But she'll, she'll get fully rooted later. But I don't know. I just, I, I, like I said, I really really love love her i love the way she moves and there's that so that is all i got to say about that um so cute she's a sweet baby <laughs> um oh and for some because someone's gonna ask this if you made it to the end and you're curious of how big nori is Nori is advertised as a 14 inch pre micro preemie or preemie, but Nori is about 14 and a half inches. She's close to 15 inches um, and she normally fits uh, micro preemie clothes actually, but some like up to five pounds, if you wash them and shrink them, she can fit those. And some of them without washing and shrinking, she can kind of fit, um, but the preemie store has a lot of stuff too for her size like up to three pound or whatever because i think she's about three or four pounds so very very sweet um and my daughter actually was she she would just look at her but she won't um i know she have to look pretty real and her size and stuff is pretty accurate because my daughter um, had twins and of course one we lost one at about two weeks old and um she uh sh she can't pick this baby up she won't pick her up she won't touch her but she she will stand over her and just stare at her so kind of touchy thing with her with that one and I probably like a lot of times when she come I probably just put her away type thing because it might be a little trigger so and that's a whole nother thing oh my god this video is going too long but that's another thing about triggers and you know not knowing sometimes you know people have lost babies and these dolls kind of help them with that the empty arm the aching what do they call it aching arm syndrome where they just want to hold something um with the weight and the feel of the baby actually is soothing others it, it it trigger them and it's too emotional and I think sometimes when it's very raw you may get the opposite end first and over time this might actually be a soother for a lot of people but everybody is different so we never know so a lot of people get offended like when people do the preemies with the tubes and all that and stuff it doesn't bother me um but I can see how it could be a trigger but we can't be necessarily responsible for everybody um 
reactions and triggers but we can be sensitive and we can be like okay this may be you know do a trigger warning this may be triggering but this is just role play no you know da 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 so anyway that is it thanks guys for watching let me know if you made it to the end i'll see you guys soon bye